Hey there, everyone. How you doing? This is Chris Johns here at Guaranteed Rate Mortgage. And this morning, I thought I would tackle uh, one of the most misunderstood uh, pieces of mortgage lending and finance, which is credit scoring. Uh, it's not something that we learn about in school, and uh, we just kind of all fumble along our way and try to figure it out. So uh, this is going to give you some really, really solid uh, information and a good foundation uh, to build your own credit score and keep that improving. Um, so let's dive right in here. We're going to start with uh, what I'm going to call the basics. Uh, so the first thing that you want to do with credit scoring is to monitor your own score for trends. Now, I will tell you that you will have different credit scores uh, in your life, depending what you're trying to do. And, and that would be on the same day. So if you're trying to go to a, a department store like, you know, Old Navy or the Gap or something and get a card like that, or if you're trying to get a a gas card at Chevron, or you want to get an auto loan or a mortgage. If you had your credit score uh, pulled by those different entities, they would have different scores for you. And the reason is, is that a credit score is a very complex uh, algorithm of, of numbers and figures and data points. And one of those data points is what you're trying to do. So getting a hundred dollar uh, gas card at Chevron is different than getting a half a million dollar mortgage loan. So it would make sense that the credit scoring algorithm is a little bit different. Therefore, you have different scores. Um, so that's our first one. A lot of people use like uh, some kind of a credit card uh, monitoring system where they can see their score. Now that score may not be the score that I see, uh, but what it will do is show you a trend. So if your score is going up month after month after month, that's a good thing. You want to look for the trend of your score increasing. And that means my uh, score will be increasing too uh, on the mortgage side. So the next thing we'll want to do before you get into the mortgage process, typically a mortgage process takes somewhere between, you know, 25 and 30 days to close a home loan. Now you don't really want to deal with credit repair and doing uh, kind of uh, fixing disputes and, and inaccuracies on your credit scoring and your credit report during that 25 day window. You've got enough to do already. Um, so we want to make sure that any kind of medical collections or inaccurate things showing up in your credit report are handled well ahead of time. Um, the other thing, of course, number three of the basics here is just to, to always pay all your bills on time. If you have a late payment, like on a credit card, that's a real dagger. Uh, for your credit score. I kind of talk about credit scoring uh, as a boat and uh, the, the, the things that you do are either going to be engines on your boat, which is going to help increase your score, or they're going to be anchors that are going to drag you down. So uh, paying a late credit card uh, payment, that's going to be an anchor that's going to prevent your score from wanting to go up, even if you're doing all of the right things uh, in the future, that anchor is going to kind of haunt you a little bit. So be really careful with that. Uh, number four is going to be to make a little bit more than the minimum payment, especially on credit cards. So if you get a bill in the mail and, and uh, let's say you've got a $3,000 credit card balance and the, and the payment is $100, you want to try to make a payment of maybe uh, you know $200 or if, if you only have $120, make a little more than the minimum. Um, about uh, probably 12 years ago, uh, they uh, started doing something called monitoring trended data points. And there are five main trended data points on your, on your score. And one of them is, did you make a little more than the minimum payment? And uh, it really carries a bit of weight. So make sure you're doing that. The other one, number five, this is, this is honestly the best uh, pro tip that I can give you on, uh, on credit scoring is to keep your balance under 30% of the max. So let's just say you have a, a smaller credit card limit with a, a max of $1,000. Okay, so 30% is gonna be $300. Now, it can be difficult to keep your credit card balance under $300, but that would be the ideal spot. So what you could do then is increase your credit limit to $2,000. Now that card would really have an effective range uh, going all the way up to $600. That would now be the new 30%. So that's something that you can do. And I usually recommend to my clients to increase the balance, uh, not the balance, the credit limit on your credits uh, cards uh, every year. Okay, so every year 
call your credit company and ask them if they will raise the limit a little bit. And that's going to just continually help your score grow. Um, now, number six, we're going to talk about uh, keeping older, long standing accounts open. This is going to play into your credit history and the length of time you've been trusted with credit. So if, if you've got two credit cards and you opened one of them nine years ago and the other one nine months ago and you really want to close one of them, most likely you're going to want to close the one that you've only had open for nine months uh, because that one that you've had for nine years and have always made payments on time, that one's really helping your score. That's an engine for your boat. Um, now, number seven, the last one we'll end on here is just not to get too credit hungry in a short period of time. So that would be like if you go to the mall and you get an old Navy card and then you go down the road and you get a Dick Sporting Goods card and then you go down the road and you get another one. So, so this is all in a short period of time. You have accumulated all this new credit and they don't really like that. It kind of looks desperate. Like, you know, what are you trying to do here? Why are you getting so much credit all at once? So just space it out a little bit. So let's uh, let's roll down here and, and so I talk about credit scoring like a grade and what I, this is something that I created uh, years ago as I'm talking to clients and I call it the pop quiz concept. So what the pop quiz concept is um, a credit score guys is a grade just like you would have a pop quiz like in high school. Let's say there was a, a quiz in, in math every Friday and the teacher literally had three questions and they wrote the answers on the board. All you had to do was show up and take the quiz and you would get an A in the class. Okay, so using a credit card is like taking the pop quiz. I have had so many clients with, you know, eight or nine credit cards with balances on them and they come to me and they say, I'm so proud of myself over the last year, I have paid off all of my credit cards. I owe nothing to anyone, my credit score must be great, right? Well, the problem is, is it's not right because you stopped taking the test. Literally, what they want you to do is use the card responsibly and not go over 30% and then make your payment on time every time. In fact, if you're building your credit score, what you actually want to do is never pay your card off to zero. If you've got a hundred dollar balance on your card, I would only make a $95 payment because the next month now you can make another payment. And part of this trended data is going to be tracking how many consistent payments you made in a row. So if you made six payments in a row and you paid your card off to zero, and then the next month there's nothing to pay, you just broke a streak of six payments in a row and now you've got to start back over. So that's being being graded just like uh, the pop quiz is being graded. So make sure that you're using credit, using it responsibly, staying organized, paying your bills on time and your score will just continually go up. So let's just look at this little chart here and see what makes up our credit scores. OK, so we're going to start here and we'll kind of go clockwise. So getting new credit, this is only worth 10% of your score. Okay, so a lot of times people are like, I don't want you to pull my credit because my score will drop. Well, that is a very small piece of your score. That's only 10% of your score. It's really nothing to worry about. If you have really strong credit and strong um, habits, you're not gonna run into a problem with that. Okay, the next one is gonna be uh, the length of credit history. So this is kind of like that, that credit card you've had for nine years. You don't wanna close that one because that's 15% of your score. The next one is credit mix. This is gonna be kind of the different type of credit trade lines that you have. So the, the, the credit trade line types out there are gonna be revolving accounts, which are credit cards, uh, installment loans, which is like an auto loan or a, a boat loan, motorcycle, something like that. Just a, a loan that you make a consistent monthly payment on. Uh, another one might be a student loan. Um, that's another category and then a mortgage. So those are kind of your four main categories. and. 10% uh, of your score is going to be, you know, do you have a good mix? Uh, now, the next one is going to be payment history. This is the one that we talked about. If you see payment history and uh, amount you owe, uh, the two of these combined make up 65% of your score. So if you're going to focus on anything with credit scoring, it's really going to be these two areas. 
So the payment history is, are you making your payments on time? Have you had these cards open for a long time? Have you made a lot of consecutive, uh, consecutive payments over the month after month? Um, so, so that is uh, one of the things we wanna look at. And the other one is the amounts you owe, which is the 30% of the max. That's where you wanna keep that $1,000 max credit card under a $300 balance uh, at all times. And it might require you to make two or three payments on that card every month because you know we know that if you go to the grocery store you know you go to costco and you go out to eat and you fill your tank up with gas you know that's a 300 dollars shopping trip right there all day so you may want to come home and once a week make a 150 dollars payment on that card and that's going to keep your balance where it needs to be until uh you've reached a spot where your uh your bank will raise your credit limit so uh those are some tips and tricks on on how uh credit scoring is monitored and the last one I'm gonna talk about uh, are some tools that I have access to uh, as a mortgage professional. And one of them is called the What If Simulator. So these are our credit tools that I can use uh, for free. I can pass on this information to you. So the What If Simulator would be where I pull your credit and then uh, I load your credit into this tool and it's gonna put all of your different trade lines on the screen. So in this particular case, this person came to me with a 631 credit score and we started to analyze what would we need to do. So if I pay off this card and pay off this card, how is that going to affect my score? And it turns out it's going to raise the score by about six, uh, by about, what is that, 46 points. So you're going to go from a 631 to a 677. Um, so that's a pretty good jump. And that's something that I can tell you in real time what we can do. Um, now, the other tool that I have access to is called the Wayfinder, and this is where I can take your credit score and I can plug it into this tool and I can say, okay, this client has $2,000 of cash and they want to distribute that among all of their open accounts to most uh, effectively increase their, uh, their score. So this particular one says that you know, if you cancel yourself as an authorized user on this card and you pay down these three accounts, it's going to cost you $381. And we have a 94% a likelihood of raising your score, you know, to whatever our target may have been. Um, and so that kind of a thing uh, can be really, really helpful for you to do early on in the process. So let's say you want to buy a house uh, in the in the summer. So then in the in the spring, maybe two or three months before you actually plan to buy, that's when you would want to come to me and say, are there any tricks uh, with my credit that I can increase uh, my credit score? Uh, can you run my credit through some of these tools? Give me some advice. Maybe I want to raise uh, my credit limit on one of my cards. Um, so these are just a few things that you guys want to know about credit scoring. Uh, if you want to reach out to me directly, I would love uh, to help you and guide you uh, on this credit scoring journey and make sure you've got as many engines on the back of your boat as, uh, as can be. So uh, my contact information is on the screen. It's easy to get in touch with me. I would absolutely love to uh, work with you and see how I can help. So thanks everyone for watching and I'm looking forward to uh, providing more tips uh, along the way. Thanks guys. Bye-bye.